Carthage must be destroyed. It's my birthday today. And as you can see in the camera here, I got some gifts. <laughs> These gifts are from my wife, except she said, uh, go find some stuff you like and buy it. And by my wife and that action, I mean, I bought them myself, but uh, I was given the okay with some discounts and stuff from a local store. I got some Agincourt Footnights. So this is gonna be the main focal point today. Um, I'm going to do an unboxing on the Agincourt Footnights here, Perry Miniatures. We have looked at these before on my channel. We did an unboxing of Agincourt French Infantry, and this is also, I'm not going to open it again. I might briefly to compare some things in the, uh, in the night set there, the Footnight set rather. Um, I had a box of these, which I did an unboxing for before in a previous video, and uh, what ended up happening is I went and cleaned up my, all my collection, but uh, I, uh, I sold my first box. So what happened there was that, uh, yeah, I sold the uh, original box, but I was able to pick it up again. And uh, yeah, I have a full set of Agincourt Knights. My buddy Gus has a really impressive table and I always go over to his place and see it. And I'm just so inspired to do it. And I do love the 15th century. So I'm going to keep on it. I'm not gonna sell them this time. I'm gonna do a small lion rampant force, an elite force, and then eventually get into these. Um, the other things I'll show you guys here today, is again locally i got this this is a, a jr mini this is probably out of production so i don't have to worry about it but this will go towards my desert stuff and i also am going to show you guys these crusader fantasy miniatures that i also got five dollars is pretty cheap for crusaders considering it comes overseas and shipping so i picked up these because i saw them in a, in a discount area so we're going to look at these knights first and talk about them as I go along here. And I apologize if you hear noise in the background. It's my dog, he's restless these days. It's almost his birthday too, so he probably is uh, too excited. So if you hear him crying or scratching, just ignore it and listen to me. <laughs> okay, so before I get in, thanks dog. Before, <laughs> before I get into these, you can see here, I've got a really tattered box of Agincourt Mountain Knights. A local guy here, was on the uh, Discord channel and he was selling a bunch of his Perry stuff and he pawned off a bunch of the Agincourt guys as well as the 1450 to 1500 uh, period stuff that Perry does. So I'm basically set for the 15th century, I think out of all the medieval era, or rather, yeah, all the eras within the medieval, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? I think, I think from between what you would call medieval time, basically when the Dark Ages ends up to the 1500s, I don't know if that's all medieval, maybe some of that's Renaissance, but in any case, out of anything medieval-like, it's the 15th century that's my favorite, and I was just going to stick to the later 15th century, but uh, I mean, since my friend has it, now I possess all of these uh, Agincourt guys, I think it'll be good for a Lion Rampant game. Uh, so I'll just have a small force for Perry stuff. I'm not going to open this. This is already tattered and I probably won't do an unboxing for this because I, I have all the contents in here. Uh, I just don't think it's nice showing a broken. It came like this broken and open. It just had all the pieces when the guy sold it to me. Because a proper unboxing, you have to have the plastic or at least if not the plastic, you need to have the box not yet opened. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to open it. So I'm going to get some scissors to cut that plastic off and start ripping it off. We're going to open this. I actually got this on Saturday, or I think it was Friday or Thursday, I don't remember, last week, and I didn't touch it. The rule was I couldn't open it till my birthday on today, so it's my birthday, so I'm opening it. <laughs> so Agincourt Footnights, just a quick look on the back here. Perry always does a good job presenting their uh, products here. These were, uh, I guess, made by Renedra. The, the, they would have done the plastics. But basically it says on the back here, this can be used for English or French knights, and it is a mixture of two kinds of sprues. We have looked at the Agincourt knight sprues before because I believe the uh, infantry box, the Agincourt French infantry comes with a few of those sprues, but let's just open this up anyway and compare the different knights. And I'll probably open this French infantry box as well because we can look at those and, and you know, see if they're the same thing. So we open that box there, nicely tight sprues. There's supposed to be 36 figures in here, so let's always make sure when we get them to count. So I got six on there. These look like French, six on there. So there's 12 total. There's another six, that's for 18. And then 
I have another six here, so that's gonna be 24, and then it becomes 30, and they, what's going on here? Yeah, they got 30 here, six guys, and six guys. So there's 36. Did I say 32 or 36? It's supposed to be 36. Now, interestingly, I think there's more French knights than there are British knights in this pack. I'm just gonna make sure. Oh no, they're just mixed in. Okay, so you get, uh, looks like you're gonna get three sprues of French knights and three sprues of the English knights. Now, they're pretty similar in gear, except that I guess in this era, the English would omit the, uh, the clothing over top the armor. They started wearing more, I'm gonna call it naked armor because I can't think of it. They didn't have anything over top of the armor. Now these are the French sprues and you can tell they're French because these guys still have like, you know, tunics and akaton. I think it's akaton, I don't know how to pronounce these words, but the tunics and their stuff, they're, they're I guess liberty or whatever, I can't pronounce those words. <laughs> they have their costume over top of their armor. Whereas if we take a look at the English knights, you can see here that they all have, oh, there's my dog. And as you look at these English here, and we'll look at the back here, you can see that they all have plate mail. Oh, no, some of them don't, he's got something over top, but okay. But in any case, yeah, the majority of these guys don't have any armor. They're going to, or rather they do have armor, they're going to have no tunic over top the armor. Okay, so I'm gonna clear these guys in the back here. Again, apologies for my dog. We'll look at them in a second. Um, they always give you, I call these awkward bases because I personally don't like the measurements on here. They're like 20 by 45 millimeter. I am gonna use some of these for the cavalry because for Lion Rampant, the base size doesn't matter so much. But we won't look at that so much. You can base them however you want. Um, but yeah, they give you a little booklet here. I haven't seen this one, but uh, all right, I'm just looking at the pictures here. Again, they're gonna give you a whole bunch of different flags and some information here about the different knights. There's some uh, heraldry and some different uh, uniforms. And ooh, it even talks about the, uh, the visor there, the bascinet, bascinet, however it's pronounced. And yeah, they give you some information. I'll let you guys look at that if you get the box set. What we wanna look at is the minis. So we're gonna look at the French guys first. Um, and before I get into this, I'm gonna quickly pop open the Agincourt French Infantry box set and just compare it and make sure it's the exact same sprue. All right, so I just popped open the Agincourt uh, Infantry box here. Like I said, I won't go through it because I've done it before. But yeah, it's the exact same sprue as the, uh, the Knights here. So if you get the Agincourt Infantry box set, you get one of the French Knight sprues. If you want more Knights and more variation on foot, then go for the Agincourt Footnight Sprue. Okay, now we've looked at these French before, but I'll show you guys again here, just for this video. You get a bunch of different lads in armor, and like I said, they've got the clothing over top the armor. These are from uh, 2016, I think it is. I saw it on the sprue before, yeah, 2016. And uh, you know, Perry always does such a good job and uh, getting their stuff out, it's, uh, good scale at 28, it's it's not really heroic scale. It has a lot of details. You get the chain mail in there, good plate. And uh, I'll just let you guys take a quick close up look at their faces there. They're very heavily armored beneath those tunics. Show you guys the back side here quick. You get every little detail, even like that little uh, belt between the um, uh, chain mail and the rest of his outfit there. And they got the strings on the back. So there's lots of stuff to work with. He got some scales down there on his armor. So lots to work with for painting there. And they've got good poses. They look like they're rushing towards the fight. Agincourt with arrows getting shot at them. They got the sidearms here. And I think the sidearms in every kit are very similar. They've got like these swords with these studs on them. And some will be unsheathed because you've got weapons out. And for the French here, you can see that all of their arms have uh, sleeves on them, okay? So all of these French guys here are not going to have the option of having like a, uh, if you use them just for French, they don't have the option of having like the full uh, armed sleeve. And by that, I mean like there's no sleeve, it's, uh, it's just armor along the arm. So, and this guy's kind of got the half on there, but he still has a sleeve at the top. So 
So you get some good weapons, you get an axe, you get a hammer, two-handed hammer, I think it's called Beck to Corbin, might be wrong. You get the hammer, you get a two-handed sword, you get a sawn-off lance that they used, and the shield as well. So that's the French set, or rather the French part of the box. The other part, and I think this is it. Now, I'm assuming, I don't have them, but I'm assuming that the English knights, this would be the sprue that comes in the uh, Agincourt archers, which the English have, which would make sense. You have the Agincourt archers, which have the English archers and some men-at-arms, and then you have the Agincourt French infantry, which have the, um, um, the French knights. Now, oh, I see a little bit of damage on that one, but that's okay, that's why there's multiple sprues. Anyway, here you can see that their armor is much more bare, so a lot of these guys, oh wait, this guy here is, uh, he's clearly got something over top of his armor. Most of these guys here are just going to be walking around with a full-on plate and not so much in the clothing category. The basket, or the visors rather, I actually didn't really look at that closely, but it looks like the visors here, they are different, okay, and I'll show you guys a bit up there. If you look at the visors, they are a little different from the French one. And I mean, you could easily mix them back and forth, I'm sure. But you get some good variation. I know I'll mix some in there with them. Um, they also come with this kind of uh, wreath. I'm not sure what it's called, but they put a wreath on around the helmet. Some of those English and British knights, they put that around the helmet to point out their English. It's just another, I guess, uh, way to identify themselves on the field. Again, the swords here, I think, are, are very similar. You'll notice something, though. All of these weapons on the English uh, sprue, they are sheathed, and the French one has unsheathed. So the English knights here, if you want to use them as like, uh, you know, this, they've, got, I've seen this, they've, got, they've only got one sword here out of the sheath. You have to cut it off or just borrow from the French uh, sprue there. For weapons, the British ones look, I keep saying British, I don't know if they're from Britain <laughs> exactly. They could be uh, French knights and they could, be, they could be a mix of things here. But you'll notice here that these guys have some like studs on their weaponry, right? This guy's hammer has studs. This is a bigger axe than what the French have. The French one here is, doesn't look as big. So, so this axe here is way more intimidating. They've got a single war hammer as well. It's, uh, of course, you can see all the armor on all these hands are, are it's bare armor. There's no sleeves. And that's just to represent the, um, the English not wearing tunics over top of their gear. You got more sawn off lances or spears here and they got a bit more axe work going. They also come with a shield. Now, I'm gonna pick up another sprue that looks a little nicer because that hammer broke. It's okay. You can see here, and I'll try and put them side by side, that uh, you'll be able to mix things up if you'd like to. Um, I mean, you could put some of these arms on these knights, I'm sure, no problem, and vice versa. Some of the uh, knights from this box set here, I'm not gonna pull them out, but they have these, these are newer than these, than these two kits here, but they have some knights here that have like, say they have this tunic here, they also have just the plate armor on the arms. Um, this guy too has the full suit on, but you can see kind of a mix of the different knights in here. Now you could mix them in there and it would make perfect sense. Uh, or you can make them one type if you like as well. So with this kit here, and, and you know what, I might as well show you guys one screw. I won't go through it in detail. This screw, I've already picked a bunch of stuff off here. But you can look at the weapons and stuff. These arms, if you wanted to mix them, I'm sure you could get away with taking some of these foot knight arms, because they're a similar scale, and mixing them between them. So if you wanted like this particular sword on an infantryman for whatever reason, you could mix it with the uh, Agincourt mounted set, no problem. So that is it for looking at these Agincourt guys. There's basically, yeah, three sprues of six French knights, three sprues of um, British, I keep saying British, I don't know if that was the term, let's just call them English knights for the proper term. But yeah, and these sets too, I'm gonna show you here because I've opened it. You'll, if you really want to, probably be fine mixing them in with the, um, the basic infantry that uh, that the French infantry come with. I don't know how much I'll do with that, but like if there is some gear in here that you wanted to mix in, like for example, I see this guy here, 
has an axe, maybe you want this really long axe on a knight, you could take this because it is a fully armed um, arm, yeah? And you could put it on a knight if you want to. I'm sure that'll work fine. Just make sure you, uh, you know, you can probably give a guy a crossbow. If you really, really wanted to give a knight a crossbow, you probably could with some conversions. So all these kits and the English ones, they, they mix up really well. So that's all I really wanted to show you guys in this video. That's not true, I'm gonna show you some other stuff. But um, the main part of the video is done. This is one of the knights I put together. He still has some cleanup to do on him. But this is from the Agincourt uh, Mountain Knight set. I'm gonna do about 12 of these guys. This guy, I've given him the old kind of gear. And by the old, I mean he's not wearing the old tunic or a plate mail. He's got the, uh, I guess it's called the Akaton. However it's spelled, Akaton, Akaton, I can't say these words. That padded armor on top of his uh, chain mail. I just thought he looked cooler this way than just doing all guys with straight up plate mail. So yeah, I'm gonna build a bunch of these guys and that's what the uh, mounted knights look like. If I take one of these knight sprues here and I put it alongside, scale-wise for the height of the man, it's very similar. The horses will be a bit bigger because they're kind of chargers and destriers, I think they're called. So they're a bit bigger. Let's look at these other things I got for my birthday, just because I like to share. I got this JR Miniature 28 millimeter lookout post for my desert stuff. This is all it is. It is just a single cast resin piece. It has, zoom in there, some fairly large bricks. And the reason I think that it's 28 mil is because the size of these bricks on any different scale would be kind of strange, I think, they're kind of massive. Now these stairs here, I don't have a mini with me, but if let's say we put a Perry guy here for scale just to see, you can tell those stairs don't look really safe. They look kind of steep and, and, and narrow, but you know, for one guy walking up here to be a, a lookout and stand there, I think that'll be a cool little addition, you know, on the outskirts of a town or up on a hill, just have like a little watchtower. Now, this is just from JNR Miniature. You can tell it's old because of some of that resin here is starting to, to shave off. But as long as the main structure, after I shave some of that down is on, it should be fine. You can see there that it's broken off, but maybe some putty or something will fix that. But yeah, I'll stabilize it and I'll have a nice little outpost. Um, and the other things I got were these Crusader miniatures. Now, these guys here are the clerics. I'm just showing you guys this for fun. This is a Dorvan, Dorf, a Dorvan, Dorf cleric from Crusader Miniatures. It's kind of cool. This is all fantasy, so I never expect the scale to be something like Perry's. There's an elf cleric in here, but a little more, uh, less armored, maybe lives more in the woods or something. And then this guy, this is a human cleric. He's straight out of like the Baron's War or something. Or the first crusade he's he's got some chain mail the tunic and he comes with his shield right so he'd actually pass probably for something in the, in the actual medieval era not to not something that would be uh fantasy and i also have some just for fun some crusader miniatures fantasy i think they're the paladins yeah Let's look at these guys. This guy here has got a nice cape going. This guy's kind of got Agincourt, a mix of Agincourt armor and uh, era armor, I should say, and a, uh, I don't know what kind of helmet that is, but he also comes with a kite shield of sorts. I think these are older models, but they're still done really well for fantasy. Here's a Dorvan Paladin. He's kind of the weirdest one in the lot, I think. <laughs> He's got this basic helmet with his massive beard. It's just an ax, no shield, you know? <laughs> and finally we get more of the late 15th century pod and where he you know he's got kind of like the caesar haircut basic sword at rest and he's got his uh, gothic helmet off so oh yeah just some fantasy ad additions you know if i get tired of historicals i can go paint some stuff for Frostgrave or more time or whatever i use them for rangers of shadow deep that kind of stuff so yeah that is my little birthday unboxing Vash and uh, my look at these uh, Agincourt foot knights and their buddies. So I want to, uh, I'm gonna keep working on these tonight. I'll probably build some. I still have some fantasy guys I need to finish for another project, 
but uh, I'm gonna start working on these and probably get into them right away. I just need to get 12 nights done and 12 foot nights done, and that shouldn't take too terribly long. But once those are done, I can already play the basics of Lion Rampant with 24 points. And I think starting with that, I can slowly build into the other guys. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or wanna leave a comment, just leave it below. Like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you all the next one. Have a good one. Bye.